Early in his career, his writing talent and fierce independence set him apart. But when he ran out of money, a big Hollywood studio simply made Coppola an offer he couldn't refuse. Later, on location of Apocalypse Now, he's mortgaged everything to finish the first major film about Vietnam. Coppola is plagued by natural disasters and disasters of his own making, all recorded in a behind-the-scenes documentary. But actors Marlon Brando... Are they seriously saying that Marlon would take a million dollars and then not show up? Martin Sheen... Marty, it turned out, had suffered a serious heart attack. And the director himself... Kareen out of control. The script doesn't make sense. I have no ending. I'm, I'm, like a, I'm like a voice crying out, saying, please, it's not working. Somebody get me off this. Apocalypse Now won three Academy Awards and earned $180 million in 1979. Since then, Francis Ford Coppola has worked on 12 films. At his estate in California's Napa Valley, he's a winemaker. He also owns a Caribbean resort and publishes a literary magazine. When we talked, Coppola was promoting his new film. Like The Godfather, it's an adaptation of a bestseller, John Grisham's novel, The Rainmaker. That was great. Next case. Moving on. Financing comes from Coppola himself and Paramount. The studio also contributes to marketing and distribution. Go for the reality of it because, you know, these situations are really like this. But the story is pure Coppola. It's ten against one here, so... Your weapons are your attache take cases and your zippers and your portfolios. A naive lawyer's education of how money manipulates dreams and passion. Do you even remember when you first sold out? The Rainmaker features John Voight, Danny DeVito, and Danny Glover, with newcomer Matt Damon in the lead. Besides the obvious story requirement for casting someone like Damon, Coppola had another reason. I also like to make a movie that has a lot of wonderful actors, some older but well-known, and put in that group always someone new. We did that in The Godfather when we put Al Pacino with Marlon Brando and all the well-known people. At the time, Al Pacino, known mostly for stage work, was Coppola's first choice to play Michael Corleone. Luca Brazzi held a gun to his head, and my father assured him that either his brains or his signature would be on the contract. Everyone else wanted a known name, so Francis tested others. Brazzi went after them. And so the story goes. He killed six men in two weeks. Six men in one week. Coppola's also had to fight for Marlon Brando. But Studio Brass reluctantly agreed after they saw the actor's screen test, which Coppola had arranged. And if by chance an honest man like yourself should make enemies, then he would become my enemies. We shot a test of De Niro, which I think exists, that was so electrifying. Coppola loved Robert De Niro's interpretation of Sonny Corleone. You take a gun, you shoot him right up against his f***ing head. That's what you do. You get, his, you get his brains all over your nice new Ivy League suit, Michael. That's what happens. How do you like yeah, that? It was huh? spectacular, but it was Sonny really like killer, you know, like nothing you could ever sell. But cast James Caan instead. What do you think this is, the army where you shoot him a mile away? You gotta get them close like this, but a bing, you blow their brains all over your nice Cyber League suit. Come in. And later, when he searched for the young Brando in Godfather 2, he remembered De Niro. You took everybody to your house for rehearsals beforehand. Why in Napa? What were you hoping to pull out of them? You could have done it in a studio, you could have done it in a hotel room, but why at your home? Well, even when you say it, you, you may you squiggle up your face and you say you could have done it in a studio for that reason, because it's fun in that, but... Antonio, Antonio, please. <laughs> hey, it's good, huh? It's good. I find that when people uh, play together and have dinner together, they're more receptive and uh, to new relationships. I know you don't want to hear it, Sonny, but if your father dies, make the deal. Well, it's easy for you to say he's not your father. <laughs> Francis grew up in New York City, the son of a musician. Carmine Coppola liked to move his family around. I was a pretty lonely kid because um, well, he moved so much, so I was always the new kid. And when your name is Francis and you're the new kid, it's a little rough in some of those neighborhoods that we lived in. <laughs> At nine, you had polio. You were in bed for a year. I was paralyzed. That was a very big a epidemic at that time. Many kids uh, were, were, you know, paralyzed and much worse, were in iron lungs and stuff. And that was the period when I was 
uh, pretty much alone, uh, you know, just kind of, I would play with puppets, I had puppets, I, I played with a tape recorder that, uh, and then my grandfather brought me a little movie projector, I would, my, my, th my thing uh, that I liked to do was take little, like, home movies and add sound to them, do the voices and do the music with, you know, da -da 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 -da, like that. I read that your mother kept a note that you had written to her when you were also nine, telling her you would one day be famous. I think I, the note was that I, I wanted to be famous, but I didn't think I would be. Why not? Well, because, you know, the, the, you know in our family, talent was the big deal. And, and, and uh, when any of uh, us kids said we wanted to do this or do that, my father would say, well, there's only one genius in the family, and that's me, meaning him. <laughs> but that didn't stop you. Uh, not at all. No, I always had a lot of, uh, you know, energy and uh, I was always willing to, you know, stay up all night to work on the shows. As a UCLA film student in the 60s, Francis Coppola did anything to work in film. A slightly pornographic film is still in circulation, along with Dementia 13, an axe murder effort shot in two weeks. He began earning money from writing. In fact, he co-authored the script for Patton, earning his first Academy Award. In 1969, he created American Zoetrope, a production center for young filmmakers like himself. Early on, there were no big hits, and Coppola found himself nearly broke with a wife, two children, and another baby on the way. But he had earned a reputation for well-crafted, efficient productions. So when Paramount wanted to make The Godfather, executives gave Coppola the job. But as you've seen, some of his ideas made them nervous. So nervous, they hired a second director to shadow him. That way, if they fired Francis, filming would continue. The Godfather series earned nine Academy Awards and became an American film classic. Coppola himself has five golden statues. And now you're the big cheese in Hollywood. Well, I'm not in Hollywood. I, I, you're I, in San Francisco. I haven't lived in Hollywood since I, I was, you know, just newly married. Uh, yeah, I'm I, I'm sort of a big cheese, but but uh, I, I'm still sort of a, a more of an outsider. I think when I was a kid, I didn't like that, and I, I I was sad about it. And then as I got older, I sort of realized that that's who I was, and I I enjoy the, have time by myself and to you know read and write and and uh, and fantasize, which is what I do. When you relax at home, how do you relax? Well, I like to cook. I'm very good at like making these big dinners without on a moment's notice with whatever ingredients are around. No uh, recipes. I, I know I don't. I good don't. Italian cook. I, I'm a very good Italian cook. He's been married to the same woman for 34 years. They met on a picture, and Eleanor actually made the documentary about Apocalypse Now. Together, they had three children. Their eldest began learning movie making from his father, but during production of a picture, Gia Coppola was killed in an accident. With that in mind, I wondered how Coppola managed on his latest film, where a young man dies before his time. So at the end of our interview, I asked. Well, you know, interestingly enough, uh, when uh, I was shooting those scenes and working on those scenes, it wasn't, uh, I didn't take it personally, and I didn't, but uh, there was a time only about three, four weeks ago when I saw the film more finished with its music, and uh, suddenly, out of nowhere, uh, although I had seen the scene a hundred times, I had been there, I had staged it, but somehow in the context of the finished film in the story, I found that uh, I was sitting next to my wife and, and I became very emotional because for the first time I realized that, you know, I had gone through the same thing. After 28 years, his once struggling film company is back on track making award-winning television movies. At 58, Coppola says he still has to hustle financing for his films. What, what should, I, should I? You want to sit on my lap? Where should <laughs> <laughs> That would be perfect. Oh, come over here. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. <laughs> With the ambition and energy of a younger man, plus his talent and experience, there's no doubt we'll be seeing more of Francis Ford Coppola's vision. Hey, have a lot of fun. Internationally, Francis Ford Coppola is well known too. You may have noticed the narrow red ribbon on his lapel. It's the French Legion of Honor. France gave Mr. Coppola two ribbons. I'll be right back.